From a bird in the hand to raining cats and dogs, here are the surprising origins of 30 common phrases inspired by animals. 30. In a pig's eye. Maybe it's not so popular these days, but this expression means to strongly disbelieve something. It initially had to do with pig's eyes being a reference for humans with perceived small eyes. But that was in England in the 17th century. The modern phrase originated in the US during the 19th century, and a variant of this one is in a pig's ear. 29. Red herring. In a mystery, a red herring refers to a clue that's intentionally misleading. The term dates back to mid-16th century England, but at the time it referred to the fish eaten by the poor. In terms of red herring being linked to misdirection, that may stem from an incident in the 17th century concerning an English clergyman's will. His servant was bequeathed a large trunk which contained something guaranteed to make him drink, and inside the trunk was a single salted herring. Don't know whether or not it was red. By the early 1800s, the phrase had acquired its modern connotation. 28. The bee's knees. It's difficult to make sense out of this expression, which is meant to denote excellence. A bee's knee was used as a synonym for smallness in the 18th century, but it wasn't until the 1920s when the bee's knees, along with other nonsensical sayings like the cat's pajamas, were in vogue as a term for excellence. 27. Dog's breakfast. Now, this saying is likely more familiar if you live in the UK. It means to make an utter mess of things. It's a fairly new one, first appearing in a dictionary of slang in 1937. 26. Dog's dinner. Now, this phrase sounds similar to the preceding and was actually coined a few years earlier in Miami in 1933. However, it does have a totally different meaning. If you were called the dog's dinner, it meant that you were a well-dressed human and looking sharp. 25. Happy as a clown. While the mollusks aren't necessarily known to be the most cheerful of creatures, the saying is a reference to the clam's perceived smile when the shell is opened. The phrase dates to the early 19th century in the US, and the version then went happy as a clam at high water, and that referred to a period where the bivalves are free from predators, which would make them happy clams indeed. 24. As the crow flies, alluding to the birds flying in a straight line from point A to point B, the expression seems to have surfaced in the late 18th century in the UK. Actually, though, crows are not necessarily known for flying in a straight line, but rather in large, wheeling arcs. 23. Barking up the wrong tree. Now, this phrase, referring to making a wrong assumption, debuted in the US in the 1830s. It was inspired by hunting dogs that mistakenly barked at the bottoms of trees where no quarry was actually hiding. 22. Bats in the Belfry. Meaning to be crazy or eccentric, this term initially showed up in the US at the start of the 20th century. Belfries are bell towers located atop certain churches, through which bats might fly about erratically. So the illusion is that a person has a lot of mental bats flapping about inside the head, or belfry. 21. Hold your horses. As a way of telling one to be patient or to hang on, this phrase originated in the US, first seeing print around 1844. Except then, the phrase was pronounced, hold your horses. It wasn't until 1939 that hoss was refined to horse. 20. Cat got your tongue. Maybe you felt like this when you're stumped by a question. It first shows up in print in the late 19th century in the United States and seemed to be mostly directed at children. It may not be heard so often these days, but it was certainly popular parlance back in the 1960s and 70s. 19. Hair of the dog that bit you. There are several variations on this sign, but they all refer to a concoction that's intended to cure a hangover. 
In medieval times, it was believed that if someone was bitten by a rabid dog, the hair of that same animal applied to the wound would cure the infection. As it pertains to drinking, the phrase is thought to have first seen print in the early 17th century. 18. Kangaroo Court While the precise origin of the phrase is unknown, there is a hopping good chance it originated in Australia. Now, the term refers to unauthorized sham courts that are set up to give the appearance of legit legal proceedings. In the US, such travesties of justice were called Mustang Courts, and that phrase seemed to pop up in the mid-19th century. 17. The Chickens Come Home to Roost The idea of bad deeds coming back to haunt the perpetrator has a long history in the English language. Now, this phrase originally showed up in England in the late 14th century. But back then, the creatures were identified simply as birds, not specifically chickens. Now, that identification did not come until the 19th century. 16. Get off your high horse. In olden times, only the wealthiest people could afford horses, while commoners had to walk. So this led to tension between the commoners and royalty, who were viewed as entitled and arrogant. This expression was a way of inviting that arrogant rich person down to the commoner's level to see just how much better they really were. 15. And the horse you rode in on. Now that is a more graphic way of insulting an arrogant person than telling him to get off the high horse, as we just mentioned. Several sources say this phrase can be traced back to at least the 1950s, although it could predate that. Now, this phrase is usually preceded by an unkind suggestion of one sort or another, addressed primarily to the rider, but does include the animal as well, although it does seem a bit unfair to the horse. What do you think? 14. Dog Eat Dog A familiar reference to ruthless competition, it's actually a contradiction of a Latin proverb from the 16th century that states, quote, dog does not eat dog, end quote. By 1732, though, the idiom was altered by English historian Thomas Fuller to dogs are hard drove when they eat dogs. 13. Let the cat out of the bag now, we found a couple of origins claimed for this classic idiom. In terms of revealing secrets that were previously concealed, its first documented appearance dates to a book review published in the 1760 edition of the London Magazine. The reviewer charged the author for, quote, letting the cat out of the bag. Now, if you know more about the origins of this phrase, let us know in the comments below. 12. Lame Duck these days, that term is typically applied to politicians who are serving the final term in office and are seen as having their authority diminished. But the original meaning had nothing to do with politics. It originated in the London stock market in the 18th century, and it referred to someone who had no money, specifically investors who were unable to pay back the debts. 11. Till the cows come home. The earliest known printed appearance of this one dates to around 1717. Since cows are known for the lackadaisical pace, the saying implies that an event is going to take an indefinite amount of time. 10. When pigs fly. Now, this well-known saying references an event or circumstance that seems impossible to occur. It's traced to a list of proverbs published in the 17th century, and the original statement was, when pigs fly in the air with the tails forward. 9. Tooth and nail. Well, you know this expression if you've ever had to fight something or someone with the intensity of a savage beast. The saying originated as a reference to, no surprise, wild animals as they hunted down prey. Still in fairly common use today, the saying first saw print back in 1535 in a dialogue written by Sir Thomas More. 8. Every dog has its day. Now, this one really applies more to humans than to canines, meaning that at some point, even the losers get lucky sometime. 
Its first popular usage dates to 1550 in a letter written by Queen Victoria I. However, she is not credited with coining the phrase, since the proverb was in common use by then. Did you know this line is also quoted by Shakespeare in Hamlet? 7. Wild Goose Chase Now here's another idiom courtesy of one William Shakespeare. The phrase was introduced in Romeo and Juliet around 1593. In the Bard's day, though, the expression actually referred to horse racing. Horses would follow a lead horse, which mimicked a flock of wild geese flying in formation. Today, a wild goose chase, of course, pertains to a pointless or fruitless quest. 6. Crocodile Tears Denoting an insincere display of sorrow, this expression was rooted in the myth that crocs actually wept while devouring the prey. Some sources claim the misconception dates to the 13th century. The myth first appeared in print around 1400. It wasn't until the 16th century that the expression was used in its modern context. Now, actually, crocodiles do have glands that produce tears to lubricate their eyes, but it is fairly certain they are not shedding any tears about chowing down the prey. 5. Raining Cats and Dogs It's one of the best-known idioms in the English language. Unfortunately, there is not much information just on who coined that phrase or why. There are several disputed and debunked theories as to its origin. However, the modern phrase first appeared in print in the book Polite Conversation by Jonathan Swift, published in 1738. 4. The early bird catches the worm. Both the meaning and the origin of this saying are easy to ferret out. The idea of attaining success through effort and preparation was a proverb in late 17th century England, first recorded by author John Ray as the early bird catcheth the worm. This one has certainly stood the test of time. 3. Don't count your chickens before they are hatched. Now, how many times have you heard this one? It's one of the oldest English proverbs, advising one not to over-evaluate their assets. It appeared in print in a pamphlet by poet Thomas Howell in 1570. 2. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Now, this one first surfaced in England around 1175 in a book of homilies and some sources say that it is the oldest English proverb that is still regularly used today. So it seems that even now, you cannot make horses or humans do something they just don't want to do. 1. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Now this is one of the best known phrases in the English language, although it was likely integrated from other languages sometime in the 16th century. It warns against unnecessary risk taking, so it's better to keep the bird you have than to risk getting more only to wind up with nothing at all.